Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. This time we're going to go back to doing just something that I've done in the past, which is post-duel commentary. It's very much the lithium-style format, but it's a very well-refined format. I like doing it, and it allows me to actually just play for a while with a friend, actually talk out plays and do stuff like that, and then allows me to have ultimately a better product, a better finished product to show you guys. Now, that's not to say there won't be any live duel commentaries on the channel, this year, but this is what I want to mainly focus on when I'm doing my own solo recording, and the live recordings will probably be just stuff like live stream clips and stuff like that because that's very capable of being something to utilize. But basically, what I want to be playing is I'm going to be playing this Mythical Beast deck, which I spent the better part of two and a half hours to three hours on my most recent live stream playing and uh, trying to make as good as possible, starting from a skeleton list that a viewer provided, changing things around, and then even after the stream was over. I changed some things around, you know, some things went back to what they were, some things changed, some new ideas were implemented, and things like that. And ultimately, it came to the conclusion that this deck does not have a leg to stand on if you do not include Grinder Golem in it, which is unfortunate, but, I mean, hey, hopefully, I mean, there's an option, there's a possibility Security Dragon could be an OCG import uh, in Extreme Force. We only know, like, three of the imports at this current point in time, so this could be one of those, uh, one of those imports, but even without Security Dragon, there are some plays that Grinder Golem does provide this deck that's actually pretty decent, so it's definitely a card that Grinder Golem and then possibly Gofu as well are probably just guaranteed, like, mandatory cards you have to play in this deck. Uh, now, this is one version of the deck that I have built that I want to play for this video. Uh, I've got another version that's built uh, that is a Supreme King variant that plays more of the Supreme King cards like Dark Worm and the uh, Scales so that you can use those to potentially Pendulum Summon out your big guys like Master Cerberus and stuff like that, uh, as well as Dark Worm being a very good card to allow you to go into uh, Heavy Metal Foe's Electromite. But, I digress. Essentially, this deck it tries to function on the gimmick of spell counters, and it needed any additional uh, support that it could get. Any additional, like, backbone that the deck could get access to. Hence why Grinder Golem's in here, hence why Astrograph is in here. Um, other consistency enabling cards like Abductor, high scales like Eccentric that are also backer removal. Because it's, it's, Master Cerberus and King Jackal are two really good cards, and Garuda is also really good as far as a hand trap goes that this deck has surgical access into. Uh, but basically, you need to have cards that are backing these cards up and facilitating their summons in order for them to be good. But anyway, with all that nonsense and discussion out of the way, let us not waste any more time and let us get straight to the first game so you can see how things went. Alright, so going into the first game, I get to start playing against my opponent. My opponent is playing Pendulum Magicians using Heavy Metal Foes Electromite, so basically a post-Extreme Force build of Pendulum Magicians, which utilizes Abyss Actor Curtain Riser, uh, Astrograph Sorcerers, and still plays Apex Avion because that's one of the most reliable ways to play against evenly matched. But So, I got to start, and I have a strong opening, being able to put King Jackal on the board, uh, being able to do various other things, being able to use Jackal that I normal summon to summon the first King Jackal, and then being able to use King Jackal to reborn it out of my extra deck, and then use regular Jackal's effect again, because it is not a hard once per turn to allow myself to get access to another King Jackal on the board. Summoning them specifically under the extra monster zones, because at this point I don't know if my opponent could be playing Grinder Golem or something like that, and summoning them there makes the Grinder Golem play be something that isn't possible to be done. But so, he has to deal with these two King Jackals, which are two effect negators that are on the field. So, instead of summoning Joker and using its effect, he just scales up with what he can scale up, and then Pendulum summons too. Now, he doesn't know that I have the, uh, I don't think he knew that he, I had the Garuda in my hands. Uh, I don't know if that was common knowledge, if I had searched it, can't remember. Um, but I used the Garuda on his Pendulum Summon, which is actually very powerful, because Garuda bounces multiple monsters if they were summoned at the same time. Uh, so Garuda is a fantastic hand trap for this deck, it's actually just really wild. Uh, so it tries to resolve bouncing both the Apex Avion and the Pendulum Source, or the Skulkabat Joker that he Pendulum Summoned, which then he tries to negate with Apex Avion, and then my King Jackal gets to negate that. So. Ultimately, I'm just in a commanding position in the game, even though the things that I was doing was very simple. Just the fact that the deck that my opponent is playing really relies on resolving just, you know, one or two key effects before that Pendulum Summon goes off in order to make that Pendulum Summon very worthwhile and very valuable. And so if you're able to capitalize on that with King Jackals, then follow up with the Master Cerberus for, like, the OTK, then you just get a lot of good value there. But So Game 1 goes to me rather easily. Going into game two, my opponent gets to start, and so this is the point where I'm not sure if this deck can stand on its own two feet reliably going second against even something like Pendulum Magicians. Now, Pendulum Magicians, even with Electromite, doesn't really do a whole, like, 
astronomical a lot of plays. Like, it doesn't do a huge amount of plays. It just does very small, very powerful plays. And that's what Pendulum Magicians have always done throughout the last, you know, five to six months since they were released. They are very good quality cards, very good quality disruption in the trap card, and purple poison. Uh, a lot of different things go in into that. And basically, the deck's just capable of doing very simplified plays to make very good ending boards that aren't really that, you know, involved, but still really hard to deal with, you know? So, I have to deal with an Omega taking the Archimedic Centric out of my hand, my opponent makes up a Guska, he has the trap set, uh, just not a very good situation for me. He actually misplayed a little bit, he summoned a Skullcrabat Joker from his extra deck off his Pendulum Summon when he had another Magician there, and he should have summoned that Magician, because then that would have allowed him to leave the Purple Poison on his field that he also summoned at some point. When he synchroed into Omega, he had to get rid of the Purple Poison uh, because that was the only other Magician on his field that he could Synchro with. Uh, so making the Omega, uh, like, it took the Purple Poison away from him, whereas if he had just, you know, Pendulum Summoned a different Magician from the extra deck, then he would have been able to uh, use uh, that with Harmonizing to make Omega instead of being forced to get rid of Purple Poison. Then Purple Poison would have still been on the field here, potentially, or it would have been overlaid within Baguska. Not quite sure what his playline could have been, but so... I'm trying to deal with this Baguska in the best way possible, and I end up baiting the trap uh, with some cards, making the uh, Deco Talker to attack over Baguska, and I've got Master Cerberus online, which I use to banish his Electromite out of the extra monster zone, but ultimately there's there's not a lot that I have access to um, in terms of stopping power for plays, especially considering my opponent is starting his turn on like 8 cards. So I've got Garuda in my hand, so that's pretty powerful, that's pretty nice. I believe that got put in my head off an Astrograph that I resolved to make the Deco Talker, but my opponent just has way too many cards. He just pendulum summons for six, essentially. Uh, penduluming, be, being able to pendulum two out of his extra deck because my Deco Talker opens a zone on his side of the field. Goes into an Ignister, which gets the Deco Talker baited, and then he makes the Starving Venom uh, uh, Supreme Dragon thing, which can copy Ignister in Grave to then again just spin my Master Cerberus back to deck and then. Uh, Purple Poison pops my Decode Talker, so he's completely cleared my board, and he has an Apex Avion out, and he has the trap that I know he searched on a previous turn, so there's nothing really much I can do there, so I just, uh, I get, uh, get trapped, the trap deals with Endemon, because he tops, a, uh, he targets the uh, Endemon for the trap's effect, right, and I can save Endemon by removing a counter, but then the trap card just sends it to Grave anyway, because one of the cards that the trap targeted was not destroyed, so... Nothing really much I can do there. The uh, the Apex Avion negates the Akashic Magician, and there's nothing that I can do for plays. All right, so now going into the third game, I get to start, and as you can see, my deck just completely bricked. There's no way that I had any way of doing anything during this uh, turn, because I could have scaled a... The only play I had access to was Scale Astrograph and play Duelist Alliance, but all that does is add either another Pendulum Paradox or another Pendulum Halt to my hand, in which case, I do not have, like, any plays I could do with that. Um, so the thing is that I'm playing a deck, this Mythical Beast deck, is much more, has much more accessibility into card pool than my opponent's deck does, because he's playing a TCG legal deck that we know is TCG legal once uh, Extreme Force drops, but he's only playing Electromite, because we're, that's confirmed OCG import, and nothing else. Meanwhile, I'm playing a deck with Grinder Golems in it, Security Dragon, um, Pendulum Halt, which I don't believe comes out in Extreme Force, I think Pendulum Paradox comes out in Extreme Force, uh, I could be mistaken on that. But so I'm playing an inherently better suited deck to do plays, but his deck is just operating superior to mine because he has a deck that is capable of actually pendulum summoning. And that's something that I prefer over this version with the Supreme King version. The Supreme King version of this deck actually focuses on pendulum summoning a little bit more. It focuses on it a lot, actually, because of Dark Worm and Dragon Shrines being able to essentially get you a scale rather easily that allows you to summon your dudes, and that deck has access to scales that go to 0 to 13, meaning you can summon Master Cerberus. But anyway, as you can see, I'm doing a Grinder Golem combo, doing the combo to... I en ended up calling Magical Citadel of Endemon off the Akashic to try and dig into that, uh, but didn't end up hitting Terraforming or it. Then did a Skull Deep to draw 4, put 3 back, and then just structured my turnaround the best way that I felt like I could, which ends up with Skull Deep, ends up with Master Cerberus banishing the Grinder Golem, and then ends with a King Jackal on my board that is capable of negating an effect. I ended up with Garuda in hand that I believe I searched, um, or I drew off into it off the Skull Deep and kept it, but I've got, you know, Ash Blossom plus Garuda, which is very good just in general because you've got a negate on the board in the form of the, uh, the King uh, Jackal, and then you've got the Garuda and the Ash Blossom, which is, you know, pretty damn good. Uh, so, I'm just able to take a commanding position of this game very quickly by 
negating his Skullcrabat Joker, ashing his Duelist Alliance, and his hand isn't really anything that's playable uh, because he didn't have any access to any low scales to put those Apex Avions on the board. So I get really lucky there. That ash was kind of a fringe thing. I was like, I could ash this or I could wait, and I just decided, you know what, we're going to ash it, and it worked out in my favor. So last game, fifth and final game, my opponent starts. He doesn't have that much of an impactful opening because he's just got, you know, a couple of ashes in his hand that aren't combo cards, but because of Electromite, the deck is still capable of doing good plays as long as you can put a scale up. So he's able to, you know, put Electromite up, pop double iris out of his scale, get access to the trap, summon Astrograph, and he's got purple poison plus Astrograph, or uh, plus Astrograph plus the trap. So that's really good for him. So now this was something that caught me completely off guard. Um, it, I never actually like registered this as an interaction, but if you Ash Blossom Master Cerberus, it negates the effect completely, so it doesn't destroy itself. So it literally floodgates you for the turn. That was something I did not register in my head. Like the entire time I was playing this deck, I was like, I could just auto lose the Ash Blossom on Cerberus. It was never a thought that went through my head. But that's what happens. I get Ash Blossomed on my Master Cerberus. It can't destroy itself. Therefore, I cannot activate any of my other effects this turn. And it's just basically a wrap from there because my opponent gets to kill me. So he uses Double Iris on Astrograph, uses Black Fang on my Astrograph to half it. So it does double damage over my Astrograph and halves my um, and halves my Astrograph. And then uses Purple Poison in scale to boost his uh, Astrograph while he's attacking. So it ends up doing like 4,900 damage over me. And then he also Trapeze Magician his Astrograph so that it could attack twice. So it did 49, 25, and then his Trapeze attacks me directly for 25 per game. So ultimately, I really enjoyed playing these games, and I really enjoy playing this deck because it's a very interestingly technical thing. It's a it's an interesting approach to the Pendulum, you know, style of using them as spell cards to make spell counters. It's a very interesting thing. It's definitely not something that I expected out of the first Pendulum archetype designed and released in Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrain's era, in Link era. But essentially, it still has a long way to go. It has a long, you know, list of problems that need to be tackled. Um, and those are probably addressed a bit easier by the Supreme King variant rather than this one, but this one's a bit more consistent because it just it focuses on just flooding the board with spell counters and stuff like that and trying to get out Double King Jackal and then with Garuda in hand. There's, there's strengths and weaknesses to both builds, but essentially uh, I might play with the other build for a different video. I might play with this build for another video for a different matchup, but essentially trying to play this deck versus Pendulum Magicians, the bread and butter Pendulum deck of the current era of Yu-Gi-Oh!, it just, it, it's an uphill battle. It struggles, unless you go first and open, you know, a set-up Garuda in hand with King Jackal. Like, it's very problematic to try and uh, to try and do things. But at the same time, Garuda is so good in this matchup because you can Garuda bounce the entire Pendulum Summon that your opponent does. So, I don't know. There's more things to test and more things to look at as Extreme Force comes out or gets closer to release, since this would definitely be a very prominent matchup if you tried to play this deck in tournaments. People are expecting Pendulum Magicians to be one of the best, if not the best deck once Extreme Force drops, barring any sort of ban list happening. But anyway, that is it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, links is always in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly and keep this thing going, then Patreon is the best way to do so. And you'd have my eternal gratitude if that's something that you'd like to do. So definitely go check that out if you are interested in supporting something that you like. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe as you always do, as you already do. Do all that sort of nonsense. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video, and have an awesome day. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.